Tonight, we are on the hunt for something truly bizarre. As I hope to encounter the aliens of the reef. What's going on everybody and welcome back to another Blue Wilderness Adventure here on the edge of the Caribbean Sea at night. Now we're at Grand Cayman Island and we did come here to swim at Stingrays at Stingray City. And that was awesome. We saw all kinds of cool reef fish and of course got up close and personal with those giant rays. But if we truly want to see something unique, something really bizarre, the best time to do that is at night. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our dive gear ready, head out into the darkness of the sea, and get up close with some of the most alien looking creatures you can imagine. Before we could make our descent, we had to swim away from shore out to deeper water. The visibility along the way was poor and churned up by the waves, making this process much more nerve wracking than usual. Plunging into dark water is without question disorienting. And it isn't until you regain your visibility and bearings that your instincts to turn back retreat and allow you to press forward further into darkness. My eyes struggled to scan the empty space around me for a glimpse of anything. But just like that, we have our first visitor. Drawn in by my camera lights, I find these Caribbean reef squids stunning and very interesting to observe. Oddly enough, it actually might be as equally interested in me. They can be quite the characters and are extremely intelligent. It's mesmerizing how its bright coloration and translucent skin glimmer as it flutters its fins against the dark inky water. Isn't it incredible how it can remain in perfect position with so little effort? Closely related to octopus and cuttlefish, these torpedo-shaped cephalopods have 10 appendages set in front of two very large complex eyes. And while Caribbean reef squid are normally social creatures, seeing one all alone isn't that uncommon. Wow, they really are something. What an interesting creature to kick off tonight's dive. It's a surreal sensation to descend into the black abyss of the ocean at night. Some would argue this scenario would easily rank as their greatest fear. And I wouldn't necessarily blame them. Your first night dive can be scary. Luckily, our camera lights are strong and almost create a force field, literally pushing back the fear of the unknown and establishing the reality that exists in front of us. I learned long ago that a strong sense of curiosity can be the best defense against any fear. Curiosity, like our dive lights, can illuminate our minds to focus on what we can see instead of imagining what figments may exist beyond the shadows. And in this world, almost anything my light touches brings my curiosity to a boil. The weightlessness of diving combined with this foreign landscape feels like nothing less than a space odyssey. So in the spirit of worlds beyond our imagination, tonight we are on the hunt for something truly bizarre, as I hope to encounter the aliens of the reef. Between the maze of shapes and spectrum of vivid colors that make up the coral reef, its inhabitants are equally as colorful and unusual. And as I get closer to the reef, many of the smaller creatures start to reveal themselves, like this arrow crab. As are most of its other crab cousins, this one is an opportunistic feeder hunting for worms and other easy prey items. But if that doesn't look like an alien, I'm not sure what does. Okay, let's move on and see what we can find on the other side of the reef. Oh wow, 
So in complete contrast to the arrow crab, here we have a huge reef spider crab, also known as a channel clinging crab. This species of spider crab are commonly found in waters off of Florida, the Bahamas, and various Caribbean islands, but this one is by far the largest I've seen. We're currently at about 60 feet below the surface, but these crabs can actually be found, get this, in excess of 100 feet, a depth we don't often explore for marine life. But maybe we should search for some deep water creatures on a future dive. The walls of the reef are really impressive, covered in brightly colored sponges that tower up at steep angles, giving way to flatter coral beds. Wait, what was that? I heard a crunch like some sort of popping sound. Whoa, that's what I heard. That grunt just smashed that smaller f Oh, and look at that, there's an octopus. Did you see it before it changed color? That's a Caribbean reef octopus, and a big one too. This is definitely the all-star creature of the night. Now they can be extremely difficult to find, but once spotted, will flicker with color. And these color displays are remarkable. It's both attempting to blend in with the reef to camouflage itself, and just when I get close enough, does that. That is a defensive display. See it flash white and blue and balloon up to appear larger than it really is? It's incredible how adaptive these creatures are. Not only able to change color, but also able to change their shape and skin texture completely. Seeing these behaviors is very rare. This is actually the first time I've ever witnessed it. Now let's talk about danger. All octopus are venomous, including this one, and use their beaks to inject their prey with a toxic saliva that paralyzes them while they're consumed. However, unlike their smaller cousin, the blue ring octopus, this species does not have a lethal bite when it comes to humans. But besides their venomous ways and bizarre appearance, these animals are indeed strange. Having three hearts, 360 degree vision, and possessing inexplicable intelligence has some scientists suggesting that these creatures are indeed aliens from another world. In fact, there are few fossil records to suggest otherwise, but we'll save that debate for another video. Okay, well our computers are telling us it's time to return back to the surface, but what an epic way to end our adventure. For more photos and videos of this dive, Make sure to follow me on Instagram, at RealMarkVins, and I do respond to questions, so make sure to comment and ask away. Wow, that was by far the biggest octopus I've personally ever seen out here in the Caribbean, and by far the biggest one we've ever featured on this channel, and it showed us all kinds of crazy displays. I mean, it changed color a dozen times. It went from blues to reds to oranges to stripes, and then it had those brilliant dominance displays where it ballooned up and tried to make itself look bigger on the reef. That was incredible. I cannot believe we just witnessed that. And how about that Caribbean reef squid? That's nothing to shake a stick at either. That was pretty awesome to see the bioluminescence cascading up and down its fins. And I hope everybody at home enjoyed tonight's night adventure just as much as we did. The crew and I are absolutely exhausted. We're gonna get this gear off and head back home for the evening. But uh, if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a second of the adventures ahead. There's a lot more coming up on Blue Wilderness. I'm Mark Vins, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next dive. While a person's first night dive can be a frightening ordeal, I have found that any journey through this mystical landscape will quickly replace feelings of fear with pure excitement. These days, whenever I have the chance to dive at night, I find myself jumping at the opportunity, literally just as long as my light batteries are fully charged. If you enjoyed our journey to discover the aliens of the reef, make sure to check out the time we explored Tiger Beach at night and were able to get extremely close to a nine foot lemon shark. And yes, those teeth are very sharp, just in case you were wondering. And oh hey, have you signed up to become a Brave Crew member yet? If not, click the join button on the channel homepage so you don't miss out on exclusive members-only videos and other exciting perks only for our biggest fans. So I've shown a few people photographs of this vehicle and what we're going to be doing today, and everybody seems to be very concerned 
by how large the opening at the front of the spock is. Now, is there a chance that a shark's gonna come up to the spock and like, ah, 